from Pearson Bell at Home. Um, thank you for joining us today. Today we're working on a, um, we're doing a Lazy Susan. Right now it doesn't have the laziness part of it yet applied. Um, we actually just picked up a 15 inch board at our local hardware store. So you can get these at, I know you can get them at Lowe's and Menards. We have actually had to order from Menards before. So what we're gonna do, what I wanna do today is make this look like it's um, branded or I guess burnt out of the wood um, by just using simple paint and glazes to make it look like it's been um, burned into the wood. So I wanna give it kind of a um, aged, maybe barrel look to it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started first. This is pretty gnarly. There's some, we're usually pretty rough, especially around the edges. So we're just gonna take um, a sanding paper and just give it a nice sanding, especially around the edges. Um, also clean up anything on top. You also wanna pick your side. So we're gonna pick the lesser of two evils. So we're not gonna use this side. We're gonna pick this side. So we're gonna go ahead and get started sanding. I'll go ahead and pop the camera uh, down. Let's get to sanding. So I'm using a fine grit sandpaper. You can use a medium to get you started and then just uh, finish it off with a uh, fine. Usually it will give you a nice uh, smoother surface. And I like to just kind of touch the wood. You'll feel when it's not quite as rough. These are pretty hard to get perfectly not rough, if that makes any sense. And um, this is just any, this was surf prep. I had it laying around, you can use any sandpaper. This was just free, so I'm using what I have. So we're just gonna sand those edges. So let's go ahead and complete the sanding of the project and we'll move on to our next step. We've got this totally sanded. What I forgot to mention is make sure that you are sanding with the grain. Of course, the sides are gonna be a little bit different, but you wanna make sure that when you're sanding your face, uh, the face of your project, that you sand with the grain. You don't wanna go against the grain. Um, so that's all you have to do. Now, we know we have a lot of little sandy parts stuck to this. So to make sure we get all the dust off because we want our project to come out nice. Um, so we take a, just a regular t-shirt cloth or lint-free cloth. I'm gonna mist it with some water and I'm just going to dust this. You can use a tack cloth. I have some somewhere. I think they're in my garage, but I tend to make things extra tacky with tack cloth because you can overwork a tack cloth and make it messier. All right, so just gonna clean that. Make sure you get all the dust particles off um, because even though it doesn't sometimes look like you have a lot of dust, you do, you have more than you know. All right, so we got that nice and clean. It's nice and sanded, it's nice and clean now. So we're gonna go ahead and decide if we want, um, how we want our, we're gonna start with the, the um, excuse me, with the stencil first. So these I get from Studio R12 and I like the weight of their stencils. All right, so this one, is a 15 inch stencil, but when they cut our boards and they do this nice rounded edge, this is no longer 15 inches. But the way this particular one is done, I'm gonna start here and then, so that bottom would get cut off. But we're going to, we have a lot of room here that I'm just gonna shift this and get that final little part at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get this started. We're gonna go ahead and get it started in stencils. So what I'm gonna do is get this nicely lined up. And let's see, I'm trying to decide how I, yeah. All right, so we're going to use a little bit of tape. Since we're doing a little moving, 
around of this piece. I don't want it to be a hot mess. All right, so just make sure I got it on there nice and straight. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of, we have some uh, green tape, you can have blue tape, whatever tape you got will be just fine. And we'll go ahead and just tape it down so it doesn't move around on me. I don't, I don't want it to move as I'm stenciling it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm using for our burnout look or the burn portions of our lettering, we're gonna use Dark Roast by Country Chic. So I'm gonna give it a nice shake in here. And you don't need a whole lot to do the stenciling portion. So we're gonna go ahead and get this going. I do like to have a little brown paper you can use a paper towel, whatever works best for you. Um, we're just gonna use that to kind of blot off our dark roast. It's a very dark brown. I'll show you the color here. So there's our color, almost black. So you could see that was too shiny. That's too much paint on my um, sponge. So we do use makeup sponges. They tend to work best for me. Um, some people like to use a paintbrush and swirl it on. More power to you. It's more frustration for me, so I tend to like to go a little bit faster and a little bit easier. Now, I wanna caution you, you wanna be very careful when you're doing your stenciling around the edge. You don't wanna get it on the, the uh, wood or seep out on the outside. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started here in the middle. And we're just applying this to the raw wood. There's no, um, paint, no sealer, nothing on that. We're just straight applying it on there. And you just reload as you need. And again, too much, let's see, there you go. See, shiny, that's too much. So you wanna always get it where it's dull. Got it? So nice and dull, you'll still get a plenty on your stencil. So we'll go. And typically this is a slow pace. It may take me two passes to get this covered the way I want it, and that's okay. Stenciling is not necessarily the fastest, you know, but it's definitely better than me trying to hand write this. So that would never happen. Um, I admire all those people that can actually hand letter. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue this. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do the bottom. All right, we got the majority of this um, completely covered with our stencil. Ooh, I see something I missed. All right, so we see a quick spot here. I don't wanna miss that. Here we go. All right, so we've got that completely covered here. Now we've gotta pull this portion up that you're not probably seeing very easily on the camera. And that's just the camera. Let's see if we can See that little bottom original brand down there? We wanna go ahead and put that on this portion. So we're just gonna raise this stencil up so that it's here at the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just reuse some tape here. I'll make sure we're nice and centered. So I'm just gonna put that down here. It's not really gonna be much on holding it if I pulled it too hard. So just wanna be very careful while we do this little bit down here. And the key is less is more on your um, little sponges here. All right, let's get that finished up. And then we'll show you the finished part we've got done so far. All right, so just want to be careful around these edges so you don't get it on this very thin spot between the words and the actual end of the stencil. So you want to be very careful. All right, so we're done with all of our stenciling. 
go ahead and remove the stencil. All right. <clears throat> now you can wash your stencils. Um, these are thick enough. Um, I can wash them. You can actually soak them in an alcohol, rubbing alcohol bath um, for a few minutes, a minute or so, uh, and your paint will right, wipe right off. So that, I do love that. So if you've got a big enough container to put your stencil in, you can certainly do that. I'm probably going to leave this one for now. But, all right, let's show you what we got. So here we've got our paint on our Lazy Susan base. We're going to go ahead and let that dry a little bit longer and um, then we'll go ahead and do our next step. So if you're doing this at home, I would let it dry about an hour or two. You want to make sure that your chalk paint is good and dry because you don't want to smear it when you're putting your glaze coat on top. So let's go ahead and get this dried up and I'm going to get ready. We'll go ahead and get ready to attach the base too. So we'll do that this next step as well so you guys can see how I attach our bases. Real quick, um, I do want to point out, when you pull your stencil off, you're gonna have a little bit of roughness on your uh, lettering, so it's gonna kinda stick out a little bit. Just take a fine sandpaper and just knock that down. You'll feel it um, from being rough to um, pretty much being smooth with your piece. I don't want it to feel rough or um, kinda sticking up above everything else when I'm working on my, uh, finishing coat. So we're just going to dust that off real fast. All right, so got that nice and dusted. Okay, and so what I'm going to do next is go ahead and add the Lazy Susan. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over and add that base on it. Okay, we've got our base. Now we pick these up, um, you get them at Lowe's, your hardware store, um, Amazon has these. These are 12 inch um, Lazy Susan base. Um, and they just basically rotate. Um, and there is a right and a wrong way to put this on. So you do wanna make sure that you have, um, there's gonna be a big hole like this. That way you can line up your screw holes um, with no problem. A lot of these will come with little feet or nubbins. This one did not. So we do have our own um, little feet that we'll add on to it in a, in a little bit here. So just wanna get this lined up. I'm um, gonna try to get as centered as possible because if this is off centered, your base will be a little bit wobbly. So you want to make sure that it's nicely centered. So what we're going to do is take, um, we've got um, three quarter inch self tapping screws that I like to use and they're just easy to get in. And we're just going to screw that in. Okay, there's your first one and we're going to rotate this to find our second one. And these are very easy to install. Okay, rotate to your next hole there. Okay, and then one more right there. All right, so we're gonna get this final one done. That doesn't want to go in, right? So there's like steel going on right there. There we go. Got it in there. Well, the little craziness is going on. All right, so we're going to get that off of our situation here. All right. So our Lazy Susan base is now done on the back side. What we can do now is go ahead and add our little feet. And I'm just going to add them to right next to the. Let's see if I can get this off. Some of these are pain, so they don't want to get the paper part off. They get kind of stuck on these. Let's see if we can get one to come off. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to stick it right there to the side of that little hole. Will be perfect. There. And this is just really to protect your surface. Let's see. You can get any kind of little feet. We've got the plastic little nubbins like we have, and there's, of course, 
felt ones. There's also um, cork ones. You can do anything, any of those fine. There you go. So that's attached now to your piece. Now it's ready to be used. Now we're ready to go ahead and glaze our piece. We want to go ahead and get our glaze on there and we're going to get it all on and then we're going to wipe it all back. I do have a water bottle in case it gets a little too dark for me and we can um, control that and kind of wipe it down if it's too dark and I'm not seeing a lot of my lettering here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and give this a nice shake and this is, we're, oh, wrong one. we're going to give this a shake. We're using a smoky quartz is the glaze we're using today. And we're gonna give this a nice shake. And let's go ahead and open that. All right, so nice brown color. It does have a bit of a reddish tone to it, kind of a reddish purple, purpley tone to it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna actually start on the edges first. I know that they're gonna get the darkest. And let's go ahead and get, it's going to be easier for me to actually kind of have it hanging off the table here so we can get all of that nicely done. Let's get some more. We can be as generous as we would like. Kind of make sure you get all of the little gaps here. There might be little holes, little marks on the lazy Susan, the little wood piece, you know how it was imperfect. Okay, make sure we're getting it all covered. Okay, getting it nice and coated. Okay, I'm going to keep going all the way around. more you put on the less drying or less it'll dry out as quick so put it on pretty generously it'll be nice and um, wet for you that way you can have a little bit more work time on it so we're gonna go ahead and just apply it generously liberally to the, the piece you're working on here we are and these are pine so are different woods will soak up your glazes differently okay. all right we're just going to keep it going here like i said we're just liberally applying it all on it all on there so we're using our glaze as a true stain today got it nice and covered the whole thing is covered and we're now we're going to take a clean dry cloth and wipe it back okay Let's start with my edges first okay and then we're going to go with the grain of our piece And just wipe it back and you can turn your cloth to get a nice clean spot and just keep working on it all right i'm going to continue wiping this down let me see that you guys can see that all right see that nice stained version all right now we're ready to finish up our lazy susan Here's our dried glaze over our paint. So again, we used our dark roast for our uh, stencil, and then we glazed with smoky quartz. And now we're ready for a final touch. Now, I'm gonna use the Country Chic Hemp Oil. Now, I will tell you, it is food grade. However, please note, it is not made or manufactured in a food grade facility so technically it is not suitable for you to put food on so 
Um, this would be really for your dry goods, um, like, you know, plates, um, glasses, your whiskey, uh, those kind of things. If you're putting food on, I would put a, uh, one of those paper doilies or a plate over this one. You don't want to stain this piece because you're not going to be able to submerge it in water. Once you've got that, that will rust. Um, if you want to put foods on it, I would suggest finding a hemp oil or a um, cutting board oil that is suitable for a uh, food safe product. Again though, I probably wouldn't um, just because I don't want to have to submerge that in water. I just want to wipe it off with a damp cloth and that's basically all I want to do. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and apply our hemp oil and I'm going to apply it with a chip brush so I can throw it away. And it is a greenish color. Uh, hemp oil comes in many colors from super golden um, to greenish. And it will give it a nice patina on this piece. So let's go ahead and get it nice and liberally applied. What's gonna happen is your piece is gonna soak up what it needs. Um, same thing with furniture. So you can use this to seal your furniture. It's great for dark colors. So it will not leave any streaking if you struggle with um, streaking with the darker colors when you put a top coat. Um, this just leaves a nice, beautiful, soft patina once it's nice and dry. So you'll let it sit. Um, usually I go ahead and wipe it all on there and we'll go ahead and wipe it back and we'll come back and revisit it later. Um, whatever didn't absorb in will be sitting on the top and you can uh, wipe that portion up. So we're getting that around the edges and everywhere. So again, like I said, your piece will soak up all it needs and anything that's sitting on the top of the surface is what's not going to absorb into the piece, painted or stained, or raw wood. This is great revitalizer for raw wood. All right, and I can see parts where it's really soaking in and then some parts it's not. And that's just, woods can be drier and not as dry in some spots. So. I apologize ahead of time, or I should have apologized ahead of time. I do not have my mic. We just got a new phone, and I've got to get a converter or what have you for our microphones. So, with that, I apologize. All right, we're going to go ahead and let this, normally I'd let this sit a little bit longer, but for the sake of the video, we're going to go ahead and start wiping some of this back. Um, and I can see, I wish you guys could see here on the camera that some of that has already it looks pretty dry right here because it's really soaking into let's see there maybe right there you can kind of see it soaking into that um, the wood so it's really taking the hemp oil which is great so let's go ahead I'm going to start with the edges just kind of gently wipe that back and again same thing as the glaze you're just going to kind of wipe gently and turn your cloth as you need it and you want to make sure you're working with a lint free cloth if you have a cloth that's going to lint up on you you're going to leave a lot of lint on your piece if that happens just let it dry and you can kind of dust some of that off i've had it happen before so not a big deal but it just makes it easier for you to not have a linty piece dry so it must have needed some extra hemp oil right there all right make sure I'm gonna wipe the edges off make sure we've got all the edges cleaned off
we'll go ahead and get that photograph for you so you can see it. The shine will dissipate. Um, once that kind of absorbs in and dries up a bit, you're not going to have um, a shiny piece. It's going to be pretty um, matte finish. But that was an easy project to do. It'd be a great gift. It's a great housewarming gift. Um, it's really fun. I love this piece. Um, I loved creating that. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed um, our tutorial as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. And as always, happy painting.